Good day to you, it's Marty Westley and uh, I'm very glad that to have you on this journey that we are taking to search for the truth. So I hope that you will be blessed with me. Good day to you, it's Marty Westley here again and today we're going to continue uh, where we left off and we left off last week by speaking about the 60 pillars and the 60 hooks and we uh, together the numeric value is 120 and so when the Ruach HaKadosh came down on the believers at Shavuot there were 120 together in one accord in one of the courts of the temple and the 120 is called my people are me, a tribe, a flock, a congregated unit, a nation, a people from the seed of Abraham, calling the Gentiles in the nations. So this was the beginning of the new spiritual temple with living pillars in Yeshua. Here in the first Mishkan that was erected is the Heichal, in other words, the living temple of the renewed blood covenant hidden. Even as Hava, Eve, was taken out of Adam's side before she became a wife, so all believers from Abraham's seed were chosen as first fruits in Yeshua before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1 4. Abraham's offspring in the nations that became Gentiles are coming home in Yeshua. Revelation 3.12 says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the Heichal of my Elohai, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my Elohai, and the name of the city of my Elohai. When Yahweh gave the pattern of the tabernacle to Moses, it was the awesome physical plan of redemption of Yeshua, the Lamb of Yahweh, sent to come and die for the sins of his people. It had to be built as a replica of what is in heaven. Every detail was the revelation of Yeshua, the living word and the priesthood of Melchizedek, and the renewed Berit Hadashah. The letter Vav is also the prefix to a word. Vav or and. And literally hooks words together and the numeric value is six, the number of man. The and of Yahweh's creation, made of spirit and flesh. He is Elohim in the spiritual dimension and is Yeshua HaMashiach in the physical dimension. Hooked together in an eternal bond with mankind. He will remain a God-man throughout all eternity. Greek, you have the word dwell, is skainu, to encamp, to occupy a house, to reside as in the tabernacle. It gives protection and communion. A kainoma is called the temple as Yahweh's residence. To be a pillar in the temple of Elohenu is to become like him. It's to die to self, to be absolutely obedient to his ways, to love him, to honor him and his word with all our heart and all our mind and all our might. Exodus 28, 2, 43 says, We have the beautiful holy garments made for the priesthood, for a horn, a breastplate, an ephod of gold and blue and purple and of scarlet and a fine twist twined linen with cunning work, a robe, a broidered coat, a mitre and a girdle, etc. And a breastplate of judgment with all the same colors and 12 costly gems set in gold on it representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And on each shoulder an onyx stone with the names of Israel engraved on them. Six on each, each shoulder 
A horn shall bear their names before Yahweh upon his heart continually. See the lecture on the breastplate. It's worthwhile listening to that. Exodus 28, 30 says, And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Tumim. What are they, uh, what are they called for? It is to find counsel from Yahweh. Tumim means perfections, complete truth. And Urim means lights and begins with Allah. And the Tumim begins with a Tav, first and last letter of the Allah mate, who is the word Yeshua HaMashiach. See the lecture on the breastplate of judgment again. The Bible does not say anything about who made them or where they were found. They were just there. Here we have a beautiful picture of Yeshua again in the first tabernacle taking Israel's judgment on himself as a substitute sacrifice. 1994, I had the privilege to go to Shiloh a second time where the first tabernacle was placed when Israel entered the promised land where eventually it was raised to the ground because of the spiritual adultery. I found out that there was a, a synagogue built on one of the hills there. And when I went again, I asked our leader, who was a Jewish chap, if he couldn't take me. I wasn't going to the Feast of Tabernacles that day. I wanted to go and search out if there was a place like that. And I, I related one of the stories to this man and Yahweh didn't let him sleep that night <laughs> and he, the next morning six o'clock he phoned and he said I've got a car I will take you and your friend come and so this is how I found this place and I was very I was very glad that I did go Today on one of the hills there is a new synagogue built on the style of the first tabernacle. The outside walls give the impression of pillars. Also in the entrance you see the laver for cleansing and just inside you see five pillars and further on you see four pillars. At the center of the house you see the altar. It houses the Torah. From the entrance the floor slopes upward towards the altar. What is Yeshua saying to us? The pillars of this place is still similar to those of the first tabernacle, which were made of shittim wood, speaking about the crucifixion of Yeshua as a man. The root of shittim, we have seen a shotet, it means to pierce, to flog, to scourge, to whip. And so we as believers in Yahweh and in Yeshua are the spiritual temple in the renewed covenant, the Berit Hadashah. And it seems that there is no difference in the function of this temple. The gold overlay is always there to remind us of his divinity. Matthew 27, 50, 54 says, Yeshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the spirit. And behold, the veil, the porechet of the temple, was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Yeshua saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of Elohim. John 20, 11, 12 says that after, after Yeshua was crucified. It was now, I think it was the third 
day. And Miriam stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Yeshua had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And she turned herself back and saw Yeshua standing, and knew not that it was Yeshua. And Yeshua saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Yeshua saith unto her, Miriam. And she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Yeshua says to her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended unto my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God, Elohai, and your God, Elohim. Marian of Magdala was the only person who ever saw Yeshua in his high priestly capacity as Malki Tzedek. What an honor. He had to go and sprinkle his own blood on the heavenly mercy seat. John 14 verse 1 6 says, Yeshua said to them a while previous, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in Elohim, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, it's actually a kader, a marriage chamber that they prepare. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Yeshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The way, when you look at it, the gate of Moses' tabernacle, it was called the way, derech, the road as trodden, a course of life, the way, and the numeric value is two to four. Add the numbers together and you get eight, which is a chet, and it means new life, new beginning. In Yeshua begins here, when you accept Yeshua, Yeshua as your deliverer and savior, this is where the road begins. He is the gate. He is the door of redemption. And you find the altar first, mitzbeach, because you become a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Elohim, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. Then you find the laver is called the kiyor, big bowl for washing hands and feet. It speaks to us as a place of cleansing. We are still in the world. We are cleansed by the blood of Yeshua, but this is for everyday cleansing. We must never forget that the tabernacle was on sand and they had to wash their feet and their hands all the time. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This particular chapter, when you read it, is for believers. This is given to the believer that afterwards we should sin. If we confess our sins and turn away from it, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wonderful, wonderful God. The truth. Now there are five pillars called the truth. Pillars in the holy place. Pillar we saw was our mood to stand and the numeric value on 20. Same as my people, I me. These are the living stones. Now they are standing as pillars in the spiritual temple of Yahweh. Revelation 3.12 says, Him that overcometh with honor will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elohai. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my Elohai, and the name of the city of my Elohai, which is near Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my Elohai. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God etc. Now five is also the letter of grace. Remember it was five pillars. Five is the letter He, breath of Elohim. It's called Neshama, vital breath is Chaya, breath of life. Now Neshama the value, numeric value of Neshama is 395 and Haya, the numeric value is 23. Add 2 and 3 together and you still have the number 5 again. And you see the letter Shin is the second letter of the Neshama, the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. And do you know that remember I think that we've been there already that I showed you the numeric value of the Ruach HaKodesh in heaven is also 395 when he was still in heaven was also 395 John 8 31 32 says then said Yeshua to those Jews which believed on him if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Remember at that time there were no other scriptures except the Torah. And Yeshua is the word, the written Torah. This was before the crucifixion. Truth is emet, and you can see there is Emet is written with an Aleph, a Mem in the middle, and a Tav. And so you can see the numeric value is 441. And the Mem is water. It's in the center and it's bringing together the Aleph and the Tav, the first and the last. And the numeric value of the square root of 441 is 21. And the 21st letter in the Hebrew Alabaid is the Shin, the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. Both Yahweh and Yeshua said that they were the beginning and the ending, the first Aleph and the last Tav. Remember the Tav used to be written in a cross in the old days. So the beginning was God. And the ending had to be the cross of the redemption of mankind. The Holy Spirit is promised to be given to the offspring of Israel in Isaiah 32, 13 to 15. Listen very carefully, then you can see, because these two lots of scriptures tells us that we belong to Abraham. Otherwise, we would never have been filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for dens forever, the joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. That is the way it looked in Jerusalem after Titus was finished with it. After Titus burned down the temple and Jerusalem itself, that is the way it laid fallow for 50 years. It looked like, a, like an unplowed field. Isaiah 44 verse 1, 4 says, Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says Yahweh that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Yeshuru, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. And here is the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh promised to the seed of Abraham to come in the renewed covenant. So let us, let's look at the word, the life. There are four pillars in the entrance of the most holy place called the life. And over the four pillars, a sacred veil was hung called the Perechet. The root word is Perech, and it means to break apart, to fracture, severity, cruelty. Speaking about Yeshua, laying down his life for his people in a cruel and painful way, his life for our life. He was the door through which we can now enter any time into the most holy place to be with the Father and His blessings for all eternity. The Marketzedic priesthood had just begun. Numeric value for door is four, the Dalit. It means a door and witness. And He's always been the faithful door and witness. We read it in Revelation 1.5. And from Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, if you look at the Hebrew letters there, it is Ha'ed, the faithful witness. There are two letters, the Dalet and the Ayin. And the Dalit is the door. That word is faithful witness, but the ayin is the eyes, sight. Remember what they did with Yeshua's name? They removed the ayin. And so the, in, in Israel they call him Yeshu. May his name be eliminated from the earth. But I know that they will see again one day when they say, Baruch Abba, Bashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. What would Yeshua say about the tabernacle? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. I am the door of entry. I was there at the brazen altar. I am the lamb slain from before the foundations of the world. I am the manna from heaven and the showbread, the bread of life. The true menorah from heaven, beaten into its beautiful perfection. I am the light of the world. I am the written Torah, accepted by Israel, but when I came to earth, they crucified me. I am now the living Torah that was accepted with open arms by my ecclesia and the mirror of the word because the Torah reveals sin. I am the house in which my father lived when I came down from heaven 
the mercy seat and atoning victim. I am the sacred curtain that was torn the parichet and the perfect witness and the door and the four pillars, the door into the most holy place. I am Melchizedek, the high priest of the renewed covenant. The tabernacle was the habitation of Yahweh whilst traveling in the, dis the wilderness. The Torah, the habitation for his word, constructed after a similar pattern. Galatians 3, 17 to 19 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He says not that to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Hamashiach. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of Elohim in Hamashiach, the Torah which was 430 years old after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the Torah, it is no more of promise, but Elohim gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the Torah? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come, to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator, which was Moses. The seed Yeshua was born during the fourth millennium on the first of Tishri and 30 years later on the 14th of Nisan, Pesach. He paid with his very own life for all the transgressions that Israel committed under the first covenant. It was the judgments, the ordinances, the Mishpatim that was added to the Torah. All the judgments of Israel were placed on Yeshua, the living Torah. Now there is no condemnation to those who accept his sacrifice. Amen and Amen. Just before Yeshua was taken into heaven, after his resurrection of the grave, in Luke 24, he says, and he says unto them, his disciples, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved on a shield to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse 47 says, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. Remember there were 120 believers in Yeshua who received the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh on Shavuot. Now Acts 2, 37, 39 says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ruach HaKodesh. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God, Yahweh Eloheinu, shall call. Who are they that were all very far off? <laughs> we were because we, we, we became Gentiles. Our forefathers became Gentiles. We were in the nations. I never knew that I had I had a place in Israel. Never knew it. 
Acts 5, 30 to 32. The Elohim of our fathers raised up Yeshua whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath Elohim exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Gosh, you know, I never knew that. I just thought he died for me. I didn't know that he actually came to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Did you know that? It was a surprise to me. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the, the Ruach HaKodesh, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Luke eleven thirteen says, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for, give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If he then, being evil, know how to good, give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to them that ask him? 2 Corinthians 3, 16, 17 says, Know ye not that you are the temple of Elohim, and that the Spirit of Elohim dwelleth in you? 2 Corinthians 6, 16 says, And what agreement has the temple of Elohim with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, El Chai. As Elohim has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. My people are me. 120. A pillar. And this is what we strive for today, to be a pillar in the temple of Yom. I think we've done it up for today. And so you can think about these things, what we've discussed today. And so now it's Maori Westy signing off until next time. And I'd love you to be there to go with us, with us on this journey. If you haven't listened before, it's very important that you listen. I love you lots, and I just wish you peace. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me today on today's journey. Uh, I hope you will join me again next time. So, uh, shalom for today until I see you again.